Hey everybody, it's your old pal Chuck, and I'm back with another review. And I guess the moral of this review is, they all can't be winners. Um, today we're taking a look at, from the new Hasbro Mighty Morphin Power Rangers line, this is Cruise Beast Bot. Um, I'm going to be very upfront with you, I don't know a lot about Power Rangers, I have a lot of like... The super mini plot kits that I build. I know actually a bit more about the Sentai series, and I know that like this was originally called uh, uh, Go Ranger or something when it was originally done in Japan a few years ago. Uh, go bot like Go On or something like that. Um, and Cruise or whatever it was called in Japan would actually fit into the front of the larger mech which was a car and transform into its own robot which formed the core of, of all the other zord mech combinations uh well i'm sure as we all know hasbro now has power rangers like you said it was their new series so you would think that you know he hasbro making a trans a series based on transforming and combining robots would be great unfortunately that's not the case um this figure feels a lot like the old uh, uh star wars marvel crossover transformer figures where they were designed by the non-transformers team and really came off feeling like they needed another pass in the design or to have the designs walk down the hall to the Transformers people. And that's exactly what we have here. Um, there's a lot going on here that's kind of interesting, but there's also a lot here that just doesn't work. And I think if someone from the Transformers team kind of looked over the designs, they could have helped things out. Um... We're starting off in motorcycle mode. Now, I sh before I get ahead, I don't think this is going to appear in the cartoon. I think this is just, you know, a, a figure just to put out there. And that's why I bought it. I mean, Hasbro now makes Power Rangers. I bought a Power Ranger figure for the first time in over 25 years, almost 30 years, you know. Like it's a legitimate figure, and I wanted to try it out. But we're starting off in a motorcycle mode. Uh, this is closer to i would say the tr traditional japanese style motorcycle dirt bike um the instructions are okay they're not wonderful so i hope i have this completely right um and one thing i have to mention is there's not a lot of pegging in just stuff holding in place there is a kickstand for the bike that you might have to fiddle with to get everything in position um, now, when I was talking about about things not pegging in, this whole rear wheel section there's is not attached to this back seat. You would think there would be some pegs or something, and we'll see something during the course of transformation that I'll point out, which would have made sense for them to do, but no, it just sits there. If you put roll, flip the kickstand all the way up, it can roll. Um, this side exhaust here is actually a projectile weapon. And I got to say, with the projectile in, that looks like a little bit of a cloud of smoke. You got a nice little motion effect. Sort of like uh, the Siege figures. Um, so yeah, well, it's really about it for the motorcycle mode. Um, it's red. This is the Red Ranger mech. Um, I think actually the, the hips look a little off or could just be me. I don't think things are sitting right, but I fold it up correctly but this is the red ranger zord i guess is what the term in america is um and it's really like i said one of the more prominent characters just because out of everything else it comes out of that and yeah these hips were kind of not sitting right but uh, well that's step one go ahead and remove uh the launcher here off the side it clips onto the side of the forearm and you you can rotate it around for the transformation but the problem is uh the forearm will want to rotate before this clip does and then just go ahead uh detach the wrist here because it clips into the side of the wheel 
and then fold everything out and around. The wheel here is actually attached to the um, hand and you just want to fold it forward and that will not peg but just friction into place. And then what I would suggest is uh, try to move the arms out of the way. There is no sideways shoulder movement so just rotate them up or something just get them out of the way come underneath here and you're going to want to fold the legs out they bend up at the knee joint and this is what i was talking about and they will friction into place there there's little heel spurs here that if the feet could just rotate around could have been used as a pegging point um, to secure that wheel into place and help bring things together now the legs do peg together not well but they do separate so once you have that done, bring the arms back down, get them out of the way. Come along the back here, uh, rotate the wheel sideways, and then flip this whole section back until it folds up along the back. Now, I do want to mention with the legs here, and especially with this front of the motorcycle, you're going to have to bend it until it gets to a point where you, you feel like you're breaking it, but it's just the friction. So over time, that's going to loosen up. And, uh, yeah, we're, we're done. Here's Cruz in its robot mode. You grab the uh, projectile launcher there and just clip it onto the side of the wrist, and that's about it. Uh, articulation, you do have the forward and back arm movement. As I mentioned, the forearms do rotate. I don't think that's for transformation. They don't show you rotating the forearms, and I don't see why you would do that. Uh, the head is actually on... A bit of a bolt, like a double bowl joint that you can actually, it's really down here in the chest. So you do have a lot of movement. And as you can see, the robot head does double as the handlebars for the motorcycle. Um, you can, and, and just so you know, you can't rotate the head around for transformation. Legs can go forward, go back. They do bend at the knee, but like uh, the knee kind of, uh, the, those lower legs do friction into place, and I think that's basically to help make this stand in robot mode. Um, you do have a secondary accessory, which we'll get to, and let me just show you the blast effect. It's a pressure launcher, so just, you know, as usual, uh, press here on the back of the uh, missile, and it, you know, it launches, that's what it does, but there's no spring or anything. The other accessory is this little uh, key, which is used with the morpher, and that can clip on to the arm there and something of a shield. Uh, I guess you can flip it out, and it will work sort of like a, a sword. I mean, this is actually how you would use it as a key. And I got to tell you, that is very tight. Like, I actually feel I'm bending and tearing plastic as I rotate that around. So I don't know if it's glued in too tightly or something, but it just doesn't feel right. But there you have it clipped on the arm. I'm sure if you have the morpher, this will make different sounds because there's like a, the little notches there for when you slide it into the morphing device. But yeah, uh, I just bought this to try it out because I figured why not? It's Hasbro. Um, give it a shot. I mean, they pretty much nowadays have the market on transforming robots and this did not do well. Uh, did not do well at all. I cannot recommend this figure um, unless you're a Power Rangers fan and this is actually normal for you. This to me is not a good figure. Uh, I think the design... The plans should have been walked down the hall to the Transformers people. I think it needed another pass like that. The plastic feels cheap and thin in a lot of areas. Um, as I mentioned, you, you know, even with the key here, it feels like I, I'm tearing plastic, tearing rubber, then legitimately folding things around. Uh... Hasbro needed to do a home run and especially to really introduce this Power Rangers line. Because here's the thing. Go Busters, which was, that was the original Sentai name, was not popular in Japan. And it was never brought over by Saban, hence why Hasbro was doing it. Um, they needed home runs to get people interested and this is not a home run. The fact that this 
is the only transforming toy on the market right now for a line that its whole history is basically based around transforming and combining robots is a bit of an issue. The actual, the, you can get replicas of the Megazords, but they don't transform. The transforming, combining ones won't be on the shelves to September, which I don't understand. That should have been something that was wave one, day one, launch material. Maybe, you know, somebody who's more of a Power Rangers fan can explain it to me. I haven't even had a chance to check out the series yet. But just to put it bluntly, this is not a good transforming figure. Um, thankfully, I got it off of Amazon. I used gift cards, so I don't feel like it was a waste of money. Um, but it, it, if you uh, paying cash for this, I would have been really, really upset. Um, so this is your old pal Chuck for Cruise the B Spot, transforming Cruise the B Spot. We will see you next time.